Morning. I swear a lot. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Limbus Company. Today's the day. Today is the day we start Canto 6 today. But we do have some business to take care of first, not just one mini that we also need to get through beforehand. First of all, as is standard, we'll do an extraction, but I have zero hopes for it by this point because I've just been getting f***ing nothing from this. That fills me with some hope. That fills me with some hope, all right? All right, maybe Limbus has decided to take pity on me, or it's setting me up for an even greater disappointment when we get there. So that'll be great. Uh, I've done my best to level up the IDs to a suitable level before we start Canto 6, but some of them are just not fucking there, so we're just gonna have to make do. We'll be all right. I'm confident. Everything will be fine. No problems. None of this surprises me. Ooh. 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 Ooh, that's very cool. Oh, I like that. Lance and Gregor. No, I've never really looked at that one. Awesome, great, all right, something new, I'm happy. Yes. <laughs> oh, she's amazing. Oh, I love her immediately. Oh, she looks fantastic. Oh, that's brilliant. Yep. Yep. So good. That is so fucking good. Love it already. All right, this was a good day already. Whatever else happens, fuck it. I don't even care. This has been a good day. Uh, Lantern, which is that. <laughs> lantern or bygone days. Well, what does Lantern do? On hit, heal 40% of damage dealt. Fucking tremendous start, frankly. After defeating an enemy that has rupture, heal HP by gluttony, uh, absolute resonance, percent of max HP. So good for um, rupture teams, but I don't really use Greg for rupture teams, it's worth pointing out. He can do rupture on his base ID. Like, he's actually reasonably good at it. But I don't really have IDs that work that way. I suppose, yeah, Rose Spanner Workshop could be it. And I do want to set up a Rose Spanner Workshop situation at some point because I want to use this version of Gregor because he's so fucking cool. So... That will feed into that. But yeah, you can see that the levels aren't great. They're not fantastic. They're not the best, but level 40 Sun Shower, level 40 uh, Chief Butler Otis, level 40 Edgar Family Heir, and level 36 Faust. I reckon it'll be good enough for at least the start of Canto 6. We're probably not going to get into a particularly hard fight straight away. It'll probably be fine. But let's have a look at T-Corp Don Quixote, because that's fucking delightful. It's a Tremor ID. Tremor count, inflict Tremor. Gain Tremor count, consume Tremor, and gain the same... Oh, consume the Tremor on the target and gain it. Okay, so we're looking at Tremor like time, I guess. If the target has 6 plus Tremor gain Clash power, consume 10 Tremor count on self to gain Coin power, inflict Tremor. If the target has 10 plus Tremor, consume 10 Tremor on target and inflict 2 time moratorium. Oh my god, I'm not gonna go for all of this right now, okay? Just, yeah, alright, there's some Tremor shenanigans going on. It's a very cool ID. We will do a Tremor team at some point. Soon is not in borrowed time, stay gain borrowed time. Look, I am going to do Tremor at some point, and it seems like T-Corp is a good way to do that, so that's exciting. Maybe I could pair them with uh, the Rose Spanner IDs I've got, because I want to make use of Rose Spanner Merceau as well, because that would be fun. I just like the, <laughs> I like the look of it, it looks fun, so I would like to do that, but we'll see. I'll figure out the details later. I'm not going to watch the Wuthering Heights ego or uh, ID uptie cutscenes because I don't want the context, but I will watch the Sun Shower one because it has nothing to do with Canto 6. It's a Canto 4 ID, so that'll be fine. We'll do that first, even. So, you gain and inflict sinking. When below 15 SP or minus 15 SP, final power plus two. So he does work off of managing his uh, his sanity. And his sanity gain and loss factors seem to be exactly the same. So that's fine. Upside 2. Uh, yeah, speed inflicts and gains... Yeah, just inflicts more sinking, which is lovely. Puddle Stomp inflicts a lot of rupture. So that's fun. It's only rupture, not rupture counts. So we're probably not going to be able to do too much with it. But it is a little bit of extra damage. Spend 5 sinking to deal 20% damage and inflict... Wait, does Sun Shower just work with, like, most teams? I guess, you know, not bleed. Start the combat phase, spend one sinking count and lose SP by the current amount of sinking. Before being hit by an attack, gain protection equal to this unit's sinking, up to five protection. When hit, gain one blunt damage up next turn. So this is going to be quite involved, I think. Most likely. You gain spread out, gain six 
uh, sinking and three sinking count, inflict paralysis, inflict rupture, inflict fragile. That gains higher base number, higher base number. And he gains a support passive. Okay. <laughs> Fun. I think it's very interesting that they chose Heathcliff of all people to be the Sun Shower ID, though. Like, you know, Yi Sang for um, Spice Bush? Absolutely. This is a little odd. Colleagues have died. Three, five, maybe six. Number doesn't uh, matter anymore. They were all killed by those wretched new technologies that won't stop springing up. One lost their job and starved. One got their flesh taken apart. Others worked like cogs in the machine, treated like subhuman junk. They were all diligent chums. I was thankful that they were good to a bloke like me. Of course, I never showed it. I was one lucky bugger. I at least didn't get swept up by rushing waves of technology and die. I ran off and roamed the back streets like a thrown away umbrella until they took me in. But I guess I didn't deserve them after all. In the end, they'd all go away, like wet paper being torn away. And the regret and shame I felt as I watched it all happen had my anger boiling. Maybe, if technology didn't exist as they said, I could have been laughing and fooling around at a backstreet's pub with chums that could have been alive. So I decided to get as serious as I could be and ravage all I can get this time for sure. They work on science and technology to make life comfortable, but those things end up taking lives. It's why I started thinking that things like those shouldn't have existed in the first place. Us survivors dug into the rotten remains of a fallen wing that once stood at the top of technological progress and put on what they called ego, products of technology we detested. It's ridiculous to think that technology would have a mind, but it seems like this thing does. As soon as I wore this thing, cold and dark feelings rushed into my heart. An endless swirl of gloom wrapped around me, but as it did, I got the feeling that maybe this thing was like me. Maybe, just like I did in the past, this thing once had a friend, but got driven out and abandoned. Thinking like that it gave me motivation to fight. It helped me take down all the crooks trying to protect their damn technology and drown it all so that they'd never see the light of day again. That's not going to bring my colleagues back from the dead, of course. At least I'll reduce the number of people that will end up like us a fair bit. But... Oh, the little... <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I forgot about that. When I'm done, the chill reminds me that I'm alone. I go back to wandering damp, dark alleys. Now I can hardly sleep anywhere else. Damn it. Maybe this ego thing will do me in one day. Like our technology doomed all my mates. What a farce that'd be. Whatever. Thinking more won't give me any answers. Once I'm done with this job, I'll go back with pride. Once the new world is made, I'll have another chance. You leave now. Don't try and give me attention. I have no friends left now. Yeah, I guess it does. F I I'm actually quite impressed that they managed to like write such like mm, uh, it's difficult to find the right terms here. Very philosophical, very like self introspective dialogue, whilst also keeping it very Heathcliff. Like it is, you can you read that, and like even if there wasn't a little name tag, you'd be like, I think that might be Heathcliff, you know, because they've all obviously included the um, the British nomenclature and stuff. But uh, uh, enjoy that voice while it lasts, because you're not going to hear it again for a while, <laughs> because we're going back to voiced cutscenes, which is absolutely for the best. Now, what if we went up to up tie four? When below 25 at minus 25 SP, final power plus two. Does that stack? Do you get the benefits from below minus 15 and minus 25? Or is the idea there that you're supposed to keep it in a sweet spot between minus 25 and minus 15? Because if so, that does just kind of make Puddle Stomp worse. I assume it does stack, but I'll wait to hear about that, I think. Yeah, I'm not good- warning, that's fun. Um, I'm not gonna uptie this yet, not to uptie 4. I wanna hear if it's actually worth doing first, because I personally can't really tell. 
and I've got limited resources. So there's going to be a lot of this, by the way. I'll have provided a, a fucking time skip somewhere uh, that you guys can jump forward to so we can get to, you can get straight to the mini. But I'm definitely going to be going over these because I want to make sure that uh, I know what I'm working with. If I don't check this stuff on camera, people tend to think I haven't checked it at all. So yeah, inflict two sinking, very standard. Dusting, clash win, inflict sinking, 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 lovely. Mistress commands, inflict sinking on clash win, echoes of the mana, I remember this. Yeah, there's some good stuff there. I remember that. Clashing against targets with less than 25, minus 25 SP, extra power and deal more damage. Deal more damage against targets with echoes. When winning a clash without losing a single coin, heal 10 SP. Already at max SP, gain two offense level up. So fucking good. I'm looking forward to this. Target has seven plus sinking, coin power plus one. Yeah, this knocking heavily relies on its coin power because the base number is two, but it's a plus four. So to be fair, being able to get that to plus five makes that a 12, but it is only a 12 if you get double heads. So that is worth considering. And then we get as mistress commands, which inflicts echoes of the mana. That gains a base uh, level number increase and that's good. So does that. Lovely, we get the support passive. <sighs> Nice, good stuff, I like it. Gregor, my boy, I've been looking forward to this one. Absolutely been looking forward to this one. Saber Slash, four with plus six coin power, inflict three sinking, four plus five, two coins, clash win, inflict sinking. If Saga has enough sinking, gain haste and then inflict sinking count. Nightmare Hunt. <laughs> coin power plus one for every three sinking, max two. If the target is staggered, inflict sinking. If the target is defeated, inflict sinking count on one random enemy. Sinking, sinking, sinking. Absorb sinking and gain plus one coin power boost and one damage up next turn. 50% chance to gain the above effects without absorbing sinking, which is incredible. Target has sinking coin power plus one. Do you wish to weep? That's amazing. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. I don't even care if he's shit. And from what people have said, he's not shit. But I don't even care if he's shit. I'd fucking use him anyway. I didn't check. I didn't check the changes. I should go back. I think it just did some... Yep. Yeah. I just need to make sure it's not adding, like, really important modifiers that, like, completely change how the skill's used. Because it is a thing that can happen. More speed. Nightmare hunt. Extra number on Saber Slash. Extra coin power on Remiz. Or Remise. I don't know how it's pronounced. Let's yeah. see what you got. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. My fucking boy, I'm so excited. Confiscation, inflict two who are sinking, uh, heads hit, inflict two sinking counts, and reception art sinking, echoes of the mana, good that we're getting more of that. Inflict one sinking on target three times per turn, yep, yep, yep. That's now on hit instead of on head hit, yep, so that's actually really good. On use the target gets plus five sinking, more clash power on hit, inflict two sinking counts. That's some good stuff. We actually have enough uh, fucking thread for it, I can't believe it. Reception arts for heart seal. Yeah. Base number upgrade, base number upgrade, support passive. Excellent. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And there was a Sinclair in there as well. I saw the Sinclair, which means there's presumably going to be a Sinclair ID at some point. Although, then again, we've gotten, like, lure identities that haven't been made yet. So I don't know if uh, they'll necessarily go ahead with it. We still don't have lure Yi Sang, for example, which I really want, by the way. I am absolutely frothing at the mouth for that one. Bygone Days is actually way more important for Greg in this team. Because he can also heal Heathcliff's um, SP. Otis can also do that. And Faust can do that. We've actually got a decent support system for uh, Heathcliff here to make sure he doesn't go off the deep end. So that will be handy. Oh, I was going to say, like, you won't be hearing the voice, but we've got one more mini to do. So maybe, actually, like, there's a little bit more. Oh. Not Canto 6 just yet. I guess the traffic sucks no matter which nest we go to. We've been traveling at a snail's pace through the extreme congestion of the nest for several days now. Rodia, clearly affected by this boredom, sighed and muttered. We've been through similar long periods of inactivity before, but boredom isn't something one could easily get used to. I suppose it became a part of my job to listen to the sinners complain about the slow pace of our travel. What you need to do, Dante, is you need to work out a stand-up routine. Get the sinners entertained. Get some material. It's kind of hard to do stand-up when you don't physically vocalize, but I reckon they could do it. How much longer until the T-Corp immigration checkpoint? My only option is to give them a reminder of how far we are from our destination. 
Considering that we will be on standby for approximately a day at our next stop and taking into account various other stops we will be making en route, our estimated time of arrival is in three days. Oh boy. Ah. It's not like we're traveling very far, but with this awful traffic, it feels way further than it really is. Greg is right. It didn't seem like the city was that big. Maybe there's something to these inevitable overly long travel times. Something I'm yet to understand. I guess driving around in a large bus through the narrow back streets is what's taking us such a long time. I feel like Charon would just be clipping like parked cars and signs and stuff without even caring. Then again, she's very protective of Mephistopheles, so she might actually go in the exact opposite direction and make sure they never scrape anything. I believe that it would have been faster to march on foot. Yet what of our room and board? Are you unaware that camping out in the open is a natural part of any long march? Fuck camping. I hate camping. Hey, Officer Otis, not everyone's been a soldier here. And if we're unlucky, we might even run into those terrifying sweepers before the break of dawn. Yeah, camping in the streets is really not an option, is it? <laughs> Even a partial mention of their name drains all colour from Sinclair's face. I remember what the sinners once told me about them. That before the break of dawn, there are these things called sweepers that sweeps up every trash in the back streets. They also have really good key skills for regenerating health and... Is it S... Is it, was it called SP and Ruiner? I can't remember. But morale, I guess. Either way, some absolutely choice fucking key pages there. Goddamn. Usable well into the end game if you're taking part of the key pages rather than actually using the key page itself as the base. But I digress. It's kind of terrifying how broad their definition of trash can be. They call that hour the night in the back streets or something like that. I can't remember what the actual term is. So I'm just going to go, yeah, sure. This bus is one of the few vehicles recognized by the city as a residential vehicle, which means that we remain safe from the hands of sweepers. That's extremely valuable. Attempting to sleep outside the bus in the back streets would not permit a restful sleep. Instead, one would be forced to survive the onslaught of sweepers for an hour in the early hours of dawn. Which we probably could do, but not good for morale, really. Makes sense, those sweepers do steer clear of the residential areas after all. A slow yet safe travel by vehicle, or a fast yet high risk march on foot. This is quite the strategic dilemma. No, it isn't. Just stay in the bus. Goddamn. I do not believe that the latter is option is up for consideration of any fellow. The bus is once again consumed by commotion. Hooray, we've managed to kill another five minutes. Ah. And into that commotion barged in the creak of an opening door and a familiar sigh. I understand that you must all be quite impatient, but we are precisely on schedule, so save your breaths, stop complaining. By the looks on your faces, I would have been worrying about a mutiny if I didn't know any better. Those papers in your hand, new orders from the higher-ups, obviously you're going to explain it to us in detail, that's the thing you do. The Gildis was holding what appeared to be a bundle of freshly printed paper. This wasn't the first time something like this happened. Sometimes, after communicating in his room with the higher-ups of the company, he'd bring out a few sheets of paper to bring us up to speed. Yes, new update. I actually am going to explain these things to you. Shocking, I know. Oh, don't tell me we're going on another detour. I'm fucking tweaking out here as it is. I'll say that I'm quite done cleaning up these destroyed messes. Look, we have to get to... Stop whining like a petulant child. You petulant child. There won't be any more detours until we reach our current destination. Virgilius furrowed his brows, walked up to the front of the bus, and leaned against one of the first row chairs. He began leisurely shuffling through the documents. This is just an announcement. It says here that there will be changes to how your records of abnormalities, distortions, and Picatula are categorized. Ah, uh, wait, so we gotta do a bunch of paperwork? No. Once completed, your observation logs are all digitized and shared with the upper echelons of the company. We have people that can do that for you. Of course, if the observation logs themselves need to be edited, there may be orders to make direct adjustments by hand. However, the categorization for each enti entity will be updated automatically. They are merely informing the sinners of the upcoming changes. It is nice to have someone else do the explaining for once. She is right. I presume this has ought to do with the new types of Picatula that we have accounted a four. Yes, but that isn't all. But wait, there's more. Virgilius closed his eyes wearily and lightly folded the paper as papers in his hands. He called out to the two sinners. Yi Sang, Ishmael. He was pointing at Ishmael and Yi Sang, and they were like, Bugger. Yeah? You have called upon my name. 
I'll leave it to you two model students to explain the contents of these documents. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm up to the task of explaining what's on this paper to you all. Uh, with that, Vergilius pretty much shoved the paper in Ishmael's hands before taking a seat in the front row of the bus. I don't like doing my job, so I won't. Did he just dump his responsibility onto us again? Ishmael didn't seem too happy about this sudden turn of events. Still, she opened the documents and began reading. I can never tell if he actually doesn't care about us or if he just naturally comes off as a cold person. So what does the thing say, is she? Give me a sec, so... Does it say anything new about the abnormalities? Looks like these documents are from the LCD, the sender address says. Ooh, LCD is the department that contacted manager Esquire, is it not? Ezra, was it? I still remember, vividly remember her chaotic, bubbly voice coming through the radio. Fun times. The former L Corp. Bah. Bah, uh -huh. The bus begins to fill with a familiar, hectic buzz once again. Well, if you would allow me to... Miss Ishmael? Ah, oh, that's not good. I haven't seen that look since Canto 5. <laughs> oh boy. Yi Sang chimed in to help with Ishmael's explanations of the documents, but... This is exactly why I'm the only one who ever reads the guides. <laughs> I can see veins starting to pop in Ishmael's fingers. At this rate, she's going to drop the documents in favor of her mace. Whoa, 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 Ishmael, I got this. Calm down. <laughs> to her fucking credit, right, I would have absolutely lost it if with every other word on a fucking document, five people chimed in, right? I would fucking hate that. I would despise it. I hurried over to Ishmael and practically hung onto the documents in her hands. We nearly tore the bundle of documents in half, but she quickly gave up and loosened her grip. Ryoshu, Otis, please keep Don Quixote and Heathcliff quiet while I take care of this. Oh yes, this will be fun. Without killing them or beating them up, please. Oh. <laughs> Ryoshu slowly lowered Don Quixote's lance. She picks it. She's going to kill her with her own weapon. <laughs> Alright then, if you have any questions while Ishmael reads from the document, raise your hands to be recognized. Yi Sang, Faust, you guys don't need to raise your hands to speak, so please chime in if there are any details you can elaborate on. Understood. Very well. The model students. Rudia, if anyone tries to speak out turn, please smack them lightly in the head. If you do good, I'll make sure to order you extra desserts during our team dinner. <laughs> oh, damn. Dante's doing great. Wow. I'm impressed. You sure know how to motivate people, Dante. <laughs> what? What an impressive growth of leadership capabilities, executive manager. All right, then. First bonk goes <laughs> to... Wait, wait, wait! This wasn't... <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Few minutes later... Sorry, I forgot to read it. After a quick commotion, I found the situation settled enough to return the documents to Ishmael's hands. Then, I'll leave it to you. <clears throat> so, the former L Corp, also known as the Lobotomy Corporation, used to contain and manage the abnormalities that we face in their branches. Even taking into account that their strengths were suppressed by the Golden Bowels, there was a pretty significant difference between their risk level categorizations and the actual risk involved in facing them. No kidding, the first one we faced was a fucking VAV. And it was not VAV difficulty, I assure you. Other employees and the higher-ups of Limbus Company also apparently felt that something was familiar yet off, and that's why they investigated this issue through the LCD department. So far, there have been five categories of risk levels. Five? Oh, oh, there are only four of them. <laughs> Bonk. Rodia punched Heathcliff in the crown of his head, and he promptly slumped to the ground out cold. Maybe it was the suddenness of the attack that did it. I didn't think she'd punch him. Oh, Rodia, that's amazing. I thought she was just going to slap him. <laughs> she fucking cold cocked him. Oh, please tell me someone's animated that. I'd love to fucking see it. Post a link in the fucking comments if someone has. I need to see that. <laughs> Just, she absolutely fucking sends him. Oh, incredible. Sorry. Y you didn't kill him, did you? Nah, he'll be fine. It's Heath. It's not like I smacked him that hard. 
So I'd like to point out that it's canon that Rodia can actually knock out Heathcliff without hitting him as hard as she can with a weapon. She can just do it with her bare hands. That's quite good. That's quite good. Sinclair quietly raised his hand. All right, you can go ahead. Ishmael nodded at Sinclair. Well, I thought there were only four risk levels. Zay and Teth, he and Vav, just like Heathcliff said. No, my boy. We just haven't encountered an Aleph yet. <laughs> They're the only ones we've seen so far, yeah. But according to these documents, the highest risk level category is labeled Aleph. Or Aleph, I don't know. Like I said earlier, there's a pretty significant disparity between their categorization standards and our experience with them in the field. Which is why they're apparently planning to make overhauls to those standards by com Limbus Company standards. I wish to speak. <laughs> Go ahead, Mercer. I must inquire what exactly this overhaul entails. Does this mean that the abnormalities will be recategorized within the pre-existing framework of categorization, or will additional risk level categories be created? Good question, to be honest. It doesn't elaborate that far, but it says here the Lobotomy Corporation used each abnormalities in Keflin production capability to categorize them into different risk levels. I didn't... yeah, no, that makes sense, but I never thought of it that way. Abnormalities with more complicated, difficult management conditions apparently produced more in Keflin. I guess the more complicated an abnormality is, the harder they are to fight. That does line up with our experiences, sort of, except for the first boss fight in the game, which was laughable. First dungeon boss, anyway. Well, first proper dungeon boss, anyway. First final boss in a dungeon. Whatever, man. But it can hardly be said that it was flawless. Looks to me like they're trying to make these risk levels better reflect our own field experience, which doesn't rule out the possibility of them adding more tiers to the pre-existing ones. Hmm, for we conduct not management but combat against these foes, it is sensible that the standards for risk levels be adjusted in accordance to- Oh! Rodeo away, Yi Sang can speak without raising his hand. <laughs> He's got perks. Privileges, even. Oh, right. My bad. <laughs> she almost got cocked, he sang. My boy wouldn't have survived it. He's a precious little sunflower. <laughs> Don't punch him, please. <laughs> if he said hop, that implied that he had to, like, dodge, which implied she already threw, and he, was, he managed to fucking evade it. I managed to stop- Oh, right. I managed to stop Rodia just before her fist connected with Yi Sang's crown. It was almost as if she was moving based on pure instinct. What a fucking beast she is. Mm, so that's why they're overhauling the risk levels based on the actual risk each abnormality poses in battle. So we do well to be wary of the possible changes to the risk levels written in the observation logs. Oh, and they'll let us know once again once the pre precise details are decided. The next section is about distortions, which... Bah! Don Quixote raised her hand. But Ishmael continued to explain without coming to a stop. She probably just ignored her. So far, we've been using the same subject classification codes as abnormalities for distortions, but it's gotten pretty clear that there is a big difference between them, enough to give these two groups dis distinct classification codes, that difference being... Hong Lu raised his hand and Ishmael nodded. Don Quixote appeared a bit... crestfallen. My poor little baby angel. <laughs> The difference is that, when defeated, abnormalities transform into their egg-like forms, but distortions don't. Am I right? Correct. Distortions can be completely subdued simply by defeating them in battle, but any method of fully slaying an abnormality is yet to be discovered, even in theory. So she says, Well, we've all had first-hand experience against them, so it shouldn't be too hard to understand. Ooh, here comes the last subject. This one's about the Picatula. They're going to give them a classification code scheme different from the abnormalities as well, including the new type of Picatula we recently encountered. Let's see. Classification basis, abnormalities and distortions both have elements of uniqueness that is missing in each individual Picatula. Considering this, it has been deemed... Okay, I don't really get what this is talking about. Faust walked up next to Ishmael and began to explain. Uniqueness in this context refers to the fact that no same entity exhibits the same location. It would be helpful to recall that all our encounters with the Picatula have always been against multiple duplicates of the same category of Picatula. However, no such encounters have been made against distortions and abnormalities. Hopefully, this has been a sufficient explanation for all. Right, I'm awake now. So simply put, we can just toss them Picatula all into the same bin, but each and every one of them abnormalities and distortions is special and unique, eh? They could have explained it much easier if they just... Oh. <laughs> he just woke up. Heathcliff seemed to have woken up from his coma, but... I'll be looking forward to that extra dessert. <laughs> 
his moment of lucidity barely lasted a moment. And that's all there is to it. Ooh, this is pretty great, huh? It's refreshing doing something like this once in a while. Bah. Don Quixote has not lowered her hand since Ishmael ignored her the first time, not even for a brief moment. Fine, ask away. Dost thou know the name of the LCD employee who hath composed that report? Ishmael seemed a bit taken aback that Ish uh, Don Quixote actually managed to ask a rather sensible question, even though it was asked with that very same enthusiasm she has been talking about. Fixers, that is. Oh, sure, give me a sec. Sender, LCD on-site investigative reasoning team leader, Moses. That's the main person from Distortion Detective, I believe. I think. I know that much. Well, we might as well keep that name in mind since we'll probably run into them sooner or later. I'm sorry for ignoring you, Don Quixote. Hmm. Though Don Quixote was finally given the answer she so passionately craved, she did not appear happy or excited about it. Instead, she seemed to be absorbed in deep thought. Something wrong, Don Quixote? Uh, I recall hearing that name in the past, yet I can't, cannot quite recall as to who that name may have belonged to. Okay, now we're actually done. Darn. Thought I'd be able to collect a bit more dessert. This was more time consuming than it was initially expected. Dante, now. Alright, oh, it's about time. Alright then, I hereby confirm today's close of business for the sinners. Someone drag Heathcliff to his room. <laughs> This could have dragged on for much longer, but the Sinners were thankfully pretty cooperative, so we managed to finish our day early. I followed the Sinners to the back door of the bus, my heart a little lighter than it was at the start of the day. Huh. I feel like I'm forgetting something. It took me about 30 minutes to realise that we left Heathcliff out cold on the bus floor. And presumably Karen and Virgilius just stepped over him. <laughs> that was great. That was really good. I love that. And seeing Dante actually organize them was genuinely impressive. They wouldn't have been able to do that like even a canto ago, I don't think. We're getting to see them grow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the heartbreaking. It's time. I'm pretty fucking excited. Let's fucking do this. Wuthering Heights, you son of a bitch. And no combat, so I don't have to worry about that for now. We won't go too far because I want to keep these at a reasonable length. And also, the less of the canto I go through without fully up leveling up my IDs, the better. But we can at least get started. Let's fucking do this. Oh, Heathcliff, you're going to have such a bad time, I can tell. Last vestiges of its beauty remain in its violet flowers. What does that mean, dude? Now, the funny thing is, I'm aware that Wuthering Heights um, is based in Britain, like the book. I know fuck all about it. Not a fucking thing. The only thing I know is that Heathcliff's character, who was presumably called Heathcliff in that, I don't know. Probably, yes, no, they would be. Was raised in Yorkshire. That is the only thing I know about Wuthering Heights. I know nothing else. So, yeah, I have no context for this. I at least knew a fair bit about Moby Dick and the rest I didn't know anything about. So, Canto 5 was actually the exception, I suppose. I knew Ahab was going to be fucking loony before we met her because that is literally Ahab's character in the book. I didn't really know anything about Queequeg or Ishmael, but Queequeg, Ishmael, yeah. Didn't really know anything about them, but I knew about Ahab and Pip. <laughs> So it sounds to me like Heathcliff came from a rather prestigious family. Or I'm assuming he was raised by a rather prestigious family. Returned from the moors. Heath buddy. We'll get through this together, mate. Let's do it. So this is what T-Corp's nest looks like. We had surprisingly little trouble making it past nest the nest's borders. I guess my concerns were unfounded. Oh, I missed you guys' voices. I actually think... I don't think this is an unpopular opinion, but I think it's actually better that um, 
the characters are only voiced during the cantos because it makes it even better when you hear them again. You know, Ishmael's not my favorite character, but even hearing her voice again, I was like, oh, yes, I missed this. You know, it makes it a bit more special. So it might actually be a win-win that they're just not voicing the uh, intervalos. I think it is. <laughs> no, Gregor, you don't understand. This is a big moment for Don Quixote. She didn't fuck up the checkpoint crossing. This is a time for celebration. <laughs> Everyone seems awfully relaxed for having just entered a different nest. I guess everyone's gotten used to this by now. Humdrum, routine, I guess they'd be the words to describe the general sentiment among the sinners. Except for one, that is. Oh, my boy, it's going to be a rough time for you. We're headed to this place called Wuthering Heights next, right? I could tell from Heathcliff's glum expression that his mind was weighed down by all kinds of complicated concerns. Oh, oh Yeah, yeah, you know, just the place in which all of his trauma and anxiety stems from. You know, it's nothing major. Though his eyes were staring at the moving scenery past the windows, his mind was affixed on something that his eyes couldn't see, something that lay beyond the building walls. Wuthering Heights. Yeah. It's gonna be a real fucker. Very windy. Heckin' windy, you might even say. Bloody Wuthering. Cool, great. It sounds fantastic. I can't wait. Heathcliff's voice carried an unusually dark tone. The other sinners on the bus noticed this and began chatting him up. That's putting it mildly, yet quite fancily. Well... I mean, it was your home. It's kind of the same thing, but I get what you're saying. The bus is your homeland now, Heathcliff. This horrible bus where you've been knocked out, not once, not twice, but... Well, you were killed the other times, so that's not that's different. But, yeah, this is your home now. Yi Sang, do you really think Heathcliff's gonna explain everything in the first part? No, no, no. We got a whole canto to get through yet, buddy. I hope you get to. That would be pretty hype. Then we'll get the golden bow, punch the abnormality right in its torture, and go home. Ishmael. Do not act smug about this. You handled that exceptionally poorly until the end. You yes, saw. And at the end, she handled it really well. But up until then, she handled it very fucking poorly. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. <laughs> I think people are going to be lining up for that one. Oh, now Heathcliff has a thousand yard stare. <laughs> Everyone needs a thousand yard stare for their respective canto. From now on, anyway. Ryoshu, he said, beat the sense back into me. Amputation and nerve mutilation are not typically caused by physical trauma. They can be. They absolutely can be. But, uh... <laughs> Maybe we could just bonk him on the noggin. <laughs> be nice to him. He's going through a rough time. Oh, that's actually really nice. 
What do you mean by that? 지금의 히스클리프 씨는 가난하고 남은 게 아무것도 없잖아요. <laughs> you're, you're poor. You don't have anything left. You smell. You're not very bright. And Rodia can beat you up. And Heathcliff's like, is there a point to this? What? Canon? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he doesn't mean it. You know he doesn't. I think you might have said your words the wrong way. Hong Lu is far from the most talkative sinner, but when he does speak, he usually has something insightful to say. Usually. Though since he never says it in a way that's immediately obvious, his words are very prone to misunderstandings. True, that provides a level of context that's hard to get anywhere else. Yeah, we're, we're in, we're, we're, there's no color because we're poor. Don Quixote looked mournfully at everything around her. Then at herself, she sounded like she was about to cry. Everything had been drained of colour since the moment we entered T Corp through the back streets. It feels like even more of our colours have been taken away since then. Yeah, it's pretty fucking dire, isn't it? I imagine there'll be even less colours as we go deeper into the fucking nest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, that touches on what I was talking about last time, where it's like, the lack of color, even on a base level, even if we ignore all the crap I said about, you know, sunlight, just a distinct lack of color would affect the mind, especially if it's constant, like, no matter where you look, there is just not a, not a single vibrant color anywhere. Yeah, that'd fuck with you real bad especially if you were if you if prior to being here you had been somewhere else where there was color it would have a serious effect on you it's pretty bad it's pretty bad is it that's because they're rich probably with an annoyed look, she wrote you a gesture toward the people outside the bus. Twenty-three separate occasions, no less. Even I remembered this. Let's see, his coat, his trousers. That right there is a posh nonce, pretty sure. <laughs> He's only trying to come off as though he is. Wow, this really is Britain. The amount of people here around here who are like, yeah, look at me, I've got this thing that makes me look like I have money, when they really don't. There's quite a few. I don't bother. I'm happy to wear my <laughs> lower class uh, status on my fucking sleeves. And considering I make severely less than minimum wage per hour doing this job, I'm very lower class. His clip she do, you go to his high school, and case of second put it but on Sunday on now. Well, Wuthering Heights is presumably run owned by like a rich family, so there probably would be color there. Honey, so take on honor, don't do you also? Credo. But the implication I've gotten from the IDs up to this point is that the manor is deteriorating. So, you know, they're probably not that rich. Yeah, yeah I imagine the Ryoshi will struggle with this place more than most people. Otherwise known as middle class. Yep. Heathcliff's predictions came true soon enough. Several several thieves surrounded the bloke who's only trying to come off as though he's loaded and bashed him on the back of his head. With a wrench, no less. And that's a fucking big wrench as well. Ryoshu found this very funny. 
파렴치한 자들을 보았나? Yeah, that's Britain, all right. 혼자 다니는 무고한 시민을 단체로 핍박하고 있지 않나? 갱단이라고 부르는 분들인가요? Are they even a gang, or are they just ran do random people just mug each other here? How British is this place? 머리 흐려졌군. 저런 걸 갱단이라고 부를 수도 없고 시간을 못 채운 하루 인생들인 거지. Running out of time. I'm excited to learn more about this time concept. So I think it's going to be a very cool one. 내가 떠나올 때만 해도 저런 버러지 같은 것들은 저렇게 버젓이 돌아다니지도 않았어. So things are going well then. There are gangs that aren't scummy? 당연하지. 내가 있었던 갱단은 저런 식으로 만만한 놈한테 우르르 몰려가지 않았다고. I kind of would have expected the dead rabbits to absolutely jump someone like that. But then again, we don't actually know that Heathcliff was in the dead rabbits yet. It's not 100% confirmed. It's just like 99% almost certainly the fact. A roadblock. Is it sepia hued? Oh, you know it is. Oh, so instead, we're going to walk across the nest and just beat up tons of fucking locals who try to steal our hats. Virgilius finally spoke up after quietly listening in on our discussion for the last few minutes. And she will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean combat is about to occur? Are we going to do a combat? Can I try out my new IDs? Oh, fuck yeah. There's no time! <laughs> I'm only going to bring four people because these two would literally probably just get themselves killed. Even if I did manage to keep Maraca Sinclair alive for that um, Kurakumo fight, I don't think these two will contribute properly. Not a level nine. <laughs> Away you gits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't going to be subtle about it, were they? I wouldn't have expected them to be. We've only got 30 minutes ourselves until what? What happens when you run out of time? The dead rabbits. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Dead rabbits were vigilantes? Mask? Mask? It's almost a shame this is voiced because I could have just shown you guys so many fucking British regional accents, you would have loved it. They began rushing at us with bloodshot eyes, not giving Heathcliff time to even finish his sentence. I dare say. Now, I've seen these guys in the mirror dungeons, but I didn't look up anything about them because I didn't want to know anything. Oh, Gregor, mate. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all looking pretty fucking good, though, isn't it? Yeah. This is a team. All right, what do we got about these boys? Probably not only level 25. Wow. Urgent T-Corp gangster. No passives. All right, well, we're going to fucking body them then, aren't we? Yeah, that should do it. I want to see some skills. Yes. Ooh, 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 ooh. I love this unarmed style. Oh, Faust. Oh, yeah. Oh, this, these are some cool fucking IDs. Yeah, I'm going to have a good time. I need to see reception arts for... Oh, I do. I want to see Puddle Stomp again, because frankly, I loved it. Spread out. Yeah, I need to see that. What is your skill three? Remind me. As Mistress Commands. Yeah, I think we just did it. It was the first thing we did, and it was pretty fucking sick. Dusting. Remise. Let's see what we get. Oh, come on. Oh, no. It looked all right from what little... Oh, go on. Ooh, 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 ooh. Limbus Company fighting game, when? Sorry, let me fucking rephrase that. PM fighting game, when? 
right? Get the fucking um, Guilty Gear lads on that shit. Oh, I don't even even play. I should play Guilty Gear. I haven't played it yet. I really want to. It looks fucking gorgeous. Fucking gorgeous. Oh, I want to get. I want to see the fucking yeah nightmare hunt. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, that's what I want. So the question is, how do we keep um, Heathcliff's SP down? Because it just keeps going up. He's durable, so presumably he needs to take hits so that the sinking kicks in and he loses SP. But he's only gaining sinking count at the moment, not standard sinking, yeah. Because Umbrella Thwack gives him sinking count. The music's pretty decent, but nothing to write home about. But it's appropriate, you know, the tone is right. I want to see- yes, 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 yes! Oh, oh, oh! Oh, <laughs> Seven! <laughs> Oh, I love all. I love all of it. I just love all of it. I gotta be honest. I just kind of love all of it. I guess the way it'll work is that Heathcliff's like SP will go up, uh, which means his skills will clash worse. Then he'll get hit, and the sinking applications will take place, and his SP will go back down. At which point he'll take more damage, or he'll start doing better because his SP will be lower. I don't know. I've never used Sun Shower before. He's very different to um, the other IDs I've used. Oh, fucking gorgeous. Yeah, do it again. Yeah, do it again. Yeah, I love it. I love Puddle Stomp. I love Puddle Stomp. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Fuck him up. Oh, fuck him up. Oh. She wraps the cloth around her arm to use as a fucking, like, you know, like, uh, arm wraps. Guys, I'm freaking out. <laughs> I'm freaking out. I am fucking losing it. Interloper reception. Oh. That's how you manage it. You use his counter. Right, yeah. You make sure he takes a hit. Okay, and that's how you get the sinking to lower his SP. You also make sure he gets paralysis so that the negative coin effects don't come into play when he's at high SP. Or it doesn't even matter where SP he's at at that point. Okay, yeah, I think I'm starting to get it. <laughs> That's fucking cool. <laughs> Fuck, warning is strong. I'm having a very good time. This is the best. <laughs> I'm having a great time. Oh, I need to see that skill in full. Fuck. Please? Last long enough? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was fucking radical. <laughs> oh, these IDs fucking rule. I love them already. Yep. There's no time to... Reloaded. You can't hit the snooze button on life. I fucking can. Watch me. I'm going to try fiddling around with playing a sun shower a little bit more, see if I can get him to play a little better. Oi! Oi! <laughs> That's such an intimidating question. Imagine you're just, I don't know, minding your own fucking business and a Heathcliff shaped figure comes up to you and goes, Oi! Nice hat you've got there! Where'd you get it? He's <laughs> 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 He's not trying to steal his hat, you know. Heathcliff was looming over the man and growling threateningly. He certainly fit the look of a villain from this particular angle. <laughs> I was just complimenting him for his sharp fashion choices. <laughs> Please don't kidnap me, I'd make a very annoying ransom victim. 
the man we inadvertently saved from the hands of thieves was shuddering and screaming incoherently, almost to an unnatural degree. And we were still not out of the dark alleyways where other thieves might be waiting to get the jump on us. Oh? Do you, mate, with your, uh, less than ideal... No, fuck it. Do you, in general, think you can take, like, 12 well-armed... Let's be real from his perspective. Fixers. <laughs> to be fair, they're probably fucking desperate. <laughs> What's with you people? Oh right, Dante's gonna be a massive fucking target here. Huh? Clock? Wait, me? Yes, you. You look like a massive fucking timepiece. God, yeah, I didn't consider that angle. That's funny. Nightmare Hunt. We want to see it again. We do. We do. Oh, we do. Oh, fuck. God. Oh, it comes out so good. Beautiful. Oh, my God. Oh, oh God. The way she wraps the cloth around her fist. I'm in love. Absolutely in love. Fuck. <laughs> Also, I need to keep an eye on whether or not Heathcliff is actually subject to an attack when I use the counter, because that round I just used the counter for no fucking reason, which was pretty funny. I'll grant myself that. Oh yeah, heart seal. I love it. God, these IDs are cool. Oh. Imagine being murdered by an umbrella. Oh, oh, oh. You know what else PM could do with side-scrolling beat-em-up? You could get some good shit out of that. I played uh, Streets of Rage 4 with uh, Sweetman recently. God, that was fun. I'd never played a fucking beat-em-up with air juggles before. It was fantastic. I loved it. Bodied. Oh, boy. <laughs> I was going to say he's not going to survive that. <laughs> no fucking way. Definitely Nightmare Hunt, because it's hype as fuck. I want to see if we can get a full spread out in there, because I want to see the full animation. Please. <laughs> You're fucked. <laughs> the damage. Fun. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, I think I see a problem, actually. I think we've got Yi Sang as one of our support passives, like classically Yi Sang, and he's probably healing um, Heathcliff's SP, so we're going to need to change that up. We've got him now. Just go for damage and kill him. I'll have to look into my support passives as well and see what I can work with. There's clearly a lot of gloom in this team. I can certainly work with that. Oh, so cool. Oh, <laughs> dusting is fucking sick. Oh, yeah. Oh, God fucking damn it. I love these IDs. Oh, <laughs> just so cool. Mate, <laughs> nice hat. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him and his poor little mustache. I mean, Heathcliff is talking a lot more low and menacingly more than usual. <laughs> the meat grinder back at our rickety cannibal bus. Then... <laughs> No! Ah, Don Quixote's voice actor needs a raise. <laughs> they fucking deserve it. 
She's trying so, so hard not to say it. <laughs> the passers by of justice. That's me. <laughs> Even he's not impressed. Yeah, I figured they'd want the cash. Seems that way. Tisa Guidebook. Yojoni. Ajikto. Ishmael, you have no right to be surprised anymore. Ishmael's eyes start to glaze over. Once again, she may have been the only sinner who bothered to read up on our destination. Tisa. Time-Trek-Sai-Son-En-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm-Hmm
그런 놈들이 대놓고 활보한다는 이야기는 못 들었는데 적어도 내가 있었을 때 I bet it was your family and they didn't tell you about it 인신매매 따위가 목적인 조직이 있다면 흔적 하나들은 남을 수밖에 없다 Right, there is no way that they're that perfect We'll find something, not that this has anything to do with us Really, now that I think about it We are here for a golden bow, aren't we? 거리를 이렇게 만들 정도로 거대한 움직임이라면 더더욱 시체 안돌 정도는 찾기 마련이다. Surely. 시체도 남지 않는다는 건 단지 죽거나 죽이는 정도의 내용이 아닌. Must be werewolves that eat people, it's gotta be. 깊이 파고들수록 위험한 일일 수 있다는 건가요? Why would we look into it? It has nothing to do with us. If it's not just another violent tragedy, then maybe there's more to this than we think. Maybe there's some powerful organization pulling the strings. True, also true. It could just be nothing. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. We just established that, didn't we? The people who are going to go to the house are all closed. In fact, the description for the sweepers in Ruina states that, like, if you want to get rid of someone, kill them at, like, 2.55 in the morning, and the sweepers will take care of it. They'd probably clean up the blood as well. They'd probably be nothing. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the idea of sweepers really freaked out Sinclair for a while. <laughs> Thanks, Rodia. We had to read him bedtime stories for a month before he'd get over it. If only we had those Zero Divi IDs to crack this case, I know they would. Sinclair, you're literally like, in many cases, my most powerful ID. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, it's creepy. Guys, I hate to put too fine a point on this, but it has nothing to do with our mission to get the Golden Bow. Except it probably end up, will end up actually having something to do with it. But on the surface, it has nothing to do with it. Everyone seems to be on edge thanks to the unsettling story we heard earlier. I know what to do. Hey Heathcliff, that invitation, can you read it out loud for us again? It's easier for everyone to not be scared if you're depressed. It'll be a good idea to remind ourselves of our current mission. Besides, I could use a refresher myself. <laughs> Shut up and read it! The neatly folded invitation Heathcliff produced from his pockets completely betrayed his attempt at appearing aloof. It was folded with such tender care that it almost resembled a neat paper craft. He cleared his throat. <coughs> Ahem. Sometime later. Indeed. Nelly. Nelly. <laughs> and? And? <laughs> Bollocks to you. That's a particularly mean thing to make him read out loud. <laughs> How does he clap? He only has one hand arm. <laughs> this wasn't exactly what I had in mind when I asked him to read that letter. I was more right than I thought I would. Let's distract the sinners by making Heathcliff sad. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we are. N no. No, we're going for a mission refresher. You know, reading the objective, even though... Obviously, the bow is going to be in or under the manor or something, but it's not technically what we're here for. It clearly is, though, because all the bows are related to the individual sinners in some way. So, yeah. But at the same time, no. <laughs> Bless you, Heathcliff. That's precisely the mentality I'd approach this with if I were you. 
Not because there wouldn't be any reason for her to miss Heathcliff, but because I'd be like, I expect nothing. Because then I won't be disappointed when there's nothing. Do you see it that way? Heathcliff, Heathcliff, sit down. Let Riz Master Gregor tell you about ladies, okay? <laughs> Some sinners gathered in a circle like they're doing a literary analysis of the invitation letter. Maybe I was worrying too much. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. I think he was too busy having his family murdered. Oh, Sinclair, we need to get you out there into the world. Sinclair, <laughs> <laughs> The fuck makes you think Dante's gonna remember? Uh, also, I imagine the clock head kind of limits the dating opportunities. Hey, what's with that oddly sorry look on your face? Actually, that's a good point. In a world with prosthetics, yeah, probably. And also, Merceau is probably re uh, referencing the fan base because I've seen some of that art and it's kind of strange. But you know, you do you. <laughs> if Dante had eyes, they'd be looking at the audience right now. Everything about this is Yi Sang, Yi Sang, what's your point? <laughs> it's not even technically a love letter, that's the thing. <laughs> that's not what he was saying, I know for a fact it wasn't. <laughs> Don't bully my boy. Yeah, I also thought it was weird that anyone would like Heathcliff. Fancy that. That is unusual. And they'll totally let us just go rummaging in the basement and steal it. Yeah, no problem. Don't worry, Virgilius, so we plenty of opportunities in the future. I don't think anyone was expecting it for that specific reason. Oh, is Heathcliff going to do his detective skills? <laughs> you can't convey tone through letters. People look for it, but it's not there. Also, there's a generational gap there. Like, boomers use different kinds of words to convey different kinds of meanings, and we of younger generations, and I guess there are even younger generations than me, Sharp. The point is, younger generations convey those in different ways, or interpret those in different ways, which leads to a lot of complications. Is it relevant to this? No, not really. Let's move on. Well, let's move on. Yes, thank you, Ishmael. But where? That is convenient. Is the unique security system maids? It's a good thing we have an invitation then, hey? Mm -hmm. So Yisang. Indeed, rather, quite, in fact. Yeah, this place is going to be all manner of fucked up, I can tell. Ah, so the owner of the manor retrieved it. Oh, 
모종의 이유로 저택으로 옮겨졌다는 것이구려. I'm sure it'll be totally wholesome. 캐서린이라는 인물이 이번 작전의 핵심이겠군요. Hear that, Heathcliff? Aren't you excited? 황금 가지를 자기 저택 안에 소유하고 있는 자라니. Bold of you to assume that she's alone in the manor. 그리고 황금 가지가 아니더라도 히스클리프 씨가 자신을 보러 저택에 와줄 거라고 믿어 의심치 않는 아주 자신만만한 사람일 거고요. Or she just knows him very well. None of this conversation seemed to even register to Heathcliff, however. 혹시 주위에 이발소나 양품점이 보이면 말해줘. That's true. We still need to get him his haircut. He hasn't had a haircut yet. 아, 무슨 명소마다 멈춰서는 관광버스로 생각하고 있는 건 아니겠지. Bullshit. We absolutely will. 그냥 나를 내려주고 먼저 가도 되잖아. 뒤따라갈 수 있어. He's like, yeah, fine, right. I'll walk then. I don't give a fuck. 제가 두눈 커다랗게 뜨고 계속 보고 있는데 말이죠, 스클리프 씨. Your boy Hongle has been scouring the shops, bro. Don't you worry. 아까의 그 소문 때문인지는 몰라도 이 시간에 길거리에 열려 있는 가게가 보이지 않아요. 안개가 자욱해서 더 그런가 싶기도 하네요. We just gotta go to the more affluent parts of the nest, you know. Actually, hang on. We're in the nest, and there are bandits roaming free, just picking off the citizens and kidnapping them. We're in the nest now. Sorry, it took me a while for that to even occur to me. We're in the nest, and people are being kidnapped. That's a bit fucked. 역시 저랑 로자 씨한테 맡겨 보시는 게 제일. Originally, it wasn't surprising to me because I was just thinking of, oh yeah, you know, the back streets. But we're not in the back streets. We're in the nest. Yeah, no, that is that. I can see now why they're all a bit focusing on it a bit because, for all intents and purposes, this should be a safe place. Yeah, check on, check on. No. I imagine this will probably uh, be quite frustrating for you guys, but I am going to leave it there for today because uh, I've got a lot to do and I'm busy and we also had to do some stuff before we got into Canto 6. But next time will be nothing but Canto 6. No uptie cut scenes, no minis, nothing. It will just be Canto 6. We will be doing our best to burn a path through Canto 6 and see all the shit it has to offer and I am excited. It's been great so far and it's only been, what, four chapters, which is virtually nothing i'm already excited to see more though we will get in there properly next time i'm sorry but also it's kind of good because then i can get these two leveled up and get you to 40 and then we'll be ready to actually fight the things that we come up against it's been very easy so far that will probably change quite soon so it'd be good to be prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to Lumen, Crystallite, Summer Cat, Flanny, Painter Dragoon, Lyle the Hexi, Lipitatos, Proxy, Kamenera, Heartland, Harak J, Dresso, Sion Distance, Lol, Final Legend, Etherbin, Linky, Zeon, Cedar, Bimble Watts, Majoko, My Moon, Alkia, Sweet Baby Red, Jess Kitty, Plutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Lepa Lullaby, K Bub, Magic Owl, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Warmas Oku, SCP 1068, Nomad, and Kenny TA 104. Support me on Patreon. Thank you so much guys and thank you all so much for watching i'm curious right because heathcliff is taking this all very well and i think that's intentional as a stark contrast to the beginning of canto 5 where ishmael was not taking it very well and i think uh i think you know it's gonna get worse like a lot worse i think like very soon or perhaps there'll be more of a slow build up but eventually heathcliff is going to start not taking it very well or perhaps you might say taking it very poorly uh and i think things will get very interesting at that point but for now i'm kind of impressed with how much the dude's keeping it together <laughs> like he's it, it, there's definitely an impact, there's definitely a noticeable impact on him, because he's a lot more subdued than he is normally. Which is how you know he's actually struggling a little bit, because he'd usually be much more like, ah, nah, nah, shut up, ah, fuck you, I'm gonna beat your head in, blah blah blah, like he'd be much more rowdy, but now he's very subdued, quite passive, just kind of taking all the shtick he's getting from everyone else. He's not coping well, but he is coping. So I'm curious to see how that evolves, but that'll be next time or time. It'll be at some point in this canto and when it happens, hope I see you there. Toodles. Goodbye. My voice broke at the end there. Brilliant. Good outro form and fucking brilliant.